Hello friends, in this video we are going to look at oxides, the different types of oxides that we have. When you look at this slide, you realize that most oxides can have different colors. For example, this is white, this side it's yellow. Then secondly, you can also notice that oxides can be in solid state, for example, zinc oxide. It's in solid state, while some other oxides can be in gaseous state, for example, carbon dioxide. So let us dive deep and look at the different types of oxides. But before you do so, what exactly is an oxide? When you get an element and react it with oxygen, an oxide is always formed. For example, if you have an element of magnesium and react it with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, our magnesium oxide will be our oxide. So magnesium oxide in this case will be the oxide. So what exactly is an oxide? It will be a compound that contains two elements in which oxygen is one of them. So here we have magnesium and then oxygen. If you have a nonmetal like carbon reacting with oxygen in excess to form carbon dioxide gas, you have an element of carbon, an element of oxygen. When you put these two together, you'll have carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide will be an oxide of carbon. So basically an oxide of carbon will be a chemical compound which contains at least one oxygen atom and then one other element in its chemical formula. So we mainly have four types of oxides. We have the basic oxide. This oxide will be able to react with an acid. React with an acid. We have the acidic oxide. These are oxides which will be able to react with bases because obviously they are acids. Neutral oxides will not be able to react with any. Yes, a neutral oxide does not react with either a base or an acid. Then we have amphoteric, kind of the different, the opposite of neutral. This one will be able to react with both. Reacts with, with both acids and bases. So these are the main types of oxides, but we shall look at other two types of oxides towards the end. So try and stick around. We have basic oxides. These are oxides which when dissolved in water will always form basic solutions. That is to say they will form bases. That's why we shall call them basic because they will tend to form bases. Some common examples of basic oxides, we have magnesium oxide, sodium oxide, calcium oxide. So basically you will note that usually most basic oxides will be metallic oxides. Oxides of metals, metallic oxides. So when you get a metal and react it with oxygen to form an oxide, you will end up forming a basic oxide with some exception of some few. For example, the word equation, basic oxide, when dissolved in water shall form an alkali which is basically a base. So the common example, we have the white magnesium powder. When we dissolve it in water, we shall form a solution of magnesium hydroxide, which will turn red litmus paper to, to blue because it's actually basic. So we put a red litmus paper in this solution, it will turn to, to blue. So that's why these oxides are called basic oxides because once they dissolve in water, they will always produce a solution that is basic in nature. For example, sodium hydroxide is basic and it will have a pH that is greater than seven. So examples, metallic oxides with the exception of some few oxides that we shall see later on. Secondly, we have acidic oxides. These are oxides which will form acids when dissolved in water or they will form acidic solution. And these are mainly oxides of nonmetals, for example, carbon, mono, carbon dioxide, sorry, we have sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, as you can see, most of them are dyes. You can also have sulfur trioxide as one of the acidic oxides. What happens when you have an acidic oxide and dissolve it in water, you'll always form an acid. That's why we shall call them acidic oxides, because they tend to form acids when you dissolve them in water. For example, carbon dioxide gas tends to dissolve in water to form a weak acid known as carbonic acid. 
So this is common with acidic rain when carbon dioxide dissolves in water. So most gases that are, they, that are having two oxygen atoms, they'll tend to produce acidic oxide. We have sulfur dioxide, it will also produce an acid known as sulfurous acid when dissolved in water, while sulfur trioxide will produce our sulfuric acid. So these acidic oxides, dissolve them in water and you have a solution that will always turn blue litmus paper to red, just like acids do. Thirdly, we have neutral acids. Neutral, that means they don't fall under basic or as acids. So they will not show any property of either reacting with bases or reacting with acids. That is to say they are neutral. Yes. So these ones will almost have even no effect on our litmus paper. If at all it's moist, because their pH is relatively almost equal to seven. If at all you are trying to test for them. Unlike carbon dioxide gas, which may turn blue, moist blue litmus paper a bit to pink. So we have carbon monoxide, nitrogen monoxide, dinitrogen oxide. So these are examples of neutral oxides, all these three. So for neutral oxides, if you try to react them with acids because they are not acidic, they're not basic, our carbon monoxide will not react with hydro acid because it's not a base. Our carbon monoxide will not react with sodium hydroxide because it's not an acid. As such, these reactions are not possible. Yes, they are not viable. So these ones cannot behave as acids and cannot behave as bases because they are neutral. Then fourth, we have amphoteric oxides. These are oxides which can behave both as acids and both as bases. As such, they have properties that can be acidic or basic properties. Some common examples, we have zinc oxide, lead oxide, and aluminum oxide. So in our first or previous slides, we had a look at some basic oxides and we said they're basically metallic oxide, with exception of these three metals, zinc, lead, and aluminum. These ones will form amphoteric oxides that can react with both acids and bases. Let's take an example of our aluminum oxide. So aluminum oxide can react with an acid. In this case, aluminum oxide will act as a base to react with our acid, hydrochloric acid, to form salt and water. So in this case, it's behaving as a base. Yes, in this first equation, it's behaving as a base by reacting with an acid. While in the second, it will act as an acid by reacting with a base, which is sodium hydroxide, still to form our salt and water. So amphoteric oxides can act as bases and can act as acids. That's why we say they show both basic and acidic properties depending on what they are reacting with. Then lastly, we have miscellaneous oxides. These are the oxides we didn't include among the top four. We have the peroxides. These are oxides that usually, in, that usually contain oxygen Two oxygen molecules that are attached by a single covalent bond. For example, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, commonly used in lab preparation of oxygen. We have sodium peroxide, a pale yellow solid. These are examples of peroxides. And then we also have mixed oxides. These mixed oxides contain elements or different elements having different oxidation states. For example, try iron tetraoxide or iron 2,3 oxide. So this one contains iron in different oxidation states, iron in plus two and then iron in plus three. So in tri iron tetraoxide, we have iron two oxide present and iron three oxide present. So mixed oxides contain, can contain an element or more than one element basically cations that have more than one oxidation state. So basically those are the different oxides we have, basic, acidic, neutral, amphoteric, and then these other two peroxides and mixed oxides. One last question, what about water? Water is one of the common 
universal solvents, hydrogen and oxygen. Two elements, oxygen is part of it. So this is also an oxide, sometimes known as dihydrogen oxide. So before you drink it at home, try to let me know in the comment section below, where does water fall? Is it acidic? Is it basic? Neutral? Amphoteric? Is it a peroxide or a mixed oxide? Yes, thank you for watching. Let's meet again. See you next time.